Hey Tubers, welcome back for another adventure. What we're going to do today is rewire, <laughs> simplify the wire harness and get this all-terrain vehicle running again. Uh, it is a 1999 Suzuki Quad Runner 160, but it really doesn't matter. The electrical systems on these things are all very, very similar. We're going to convert this thing from an AC CDI, one that runs off the stator um, with alternating power, you know, a nice sine wave coming in, and we're going to go with a DC CDI i.e. runs off the battery. So um, by making that change, life will be better. Just so happens that besides a hacked wire harness, uh, which is very easy to see here, uh, this thing appears to have a dead stator. The coil that powers up the AC CDI is dead. So this is a no spark, dead CDI stator, <laughs> hacked wire harness all-terrain vehicle this is about as bad as it gets and you guys are just going to discover with a couple of pieces not much money um we could have this thing running in no time so i pulled off the front plastic just to make things a little easier did a quick inventory and i discovered i gave this a quick test the starting solenoid is dead um, this kind of looked battered and rusty, so I'm going to call this dead too. This is the ignition coil. I was kind of lucky. I did find what appears to be a functional key switch. It appears as if somebody attempted to install that, the wires are stripped bare. So, after finding all that stuff, you're going to need parts, right? You can't put this together with uh, three rocks and... Uh, piece of straw so let me show you the parts you're going to need here's the pile of stuff you're going to use we already have an ignition switch so I don't have to buy that but you are going to have to buy something and hopefully you can read this here four pin ATV 12 volt DC CDI that's this guy here this thing runs on 12 volts if it's got five pins and if it comes with the kit, it's going to run on AC and it's not going to work for what we're doing. So take it out of the box and put it on the side and buy this separately. The second thing you're going to need, ATV, CDI, wire harness, and coil. What you're going to get is this guy, the wire harness. And you're going to get one of these that, once again, is AC. Put it on the side and use the DC one that you bought separately. Other than that, I personally recommend installing a fuse, and you're gonna see that in my thing. Um, fuse with fuse and fuse holder, 12 volts. I'm using 15 amps because I'm gonna probably run some lights and other stuff off of it. I also have a dead, um, I had a dead coil, uh, um, solenoid coil for the starter, so I put in a way oversized one, one for a tractor, actually. <laughs> so um, given that I did that, um, I, I also went with the 15 amp fuse. We're going to wire the left hand side of the circuit first. Because if you don't get the starter spinning, you're not going very far. So to that end, you can see wire coming off goes to one side of the starting solenoid, right? And the other side of the starting solenoid goes to ground. On stump, some starting solenoids, the coil, the ground is provided internal for the tractor one I'm using. That's true. On the ATV ones, a lot of times there are two wires. You've got to put one to ground, and the other one is where you're going to put the power. And you can see I do that, right? Comes up, goes to the push-button switch, goes through the key switch, 
and I added a fuse in between here. You could do it or not, I kind of recommend doing it. So, let me show you what I did. This is ground. Goes directly to the starter. Right, you can see where it's attached down there where my fingers are. This is hot for the starter. And you could see that goes into this start side of the starting solenoid. And then you have the battery going to the other side of the starting solenoid. This is the switch that activates the coil. That kind of brings a little disc up and goes click, which shorts those two together and the starter goes around. From the battery, you could see I have the fuse. Comes up and around, goes to here to here, to the, to the little push button switch. And by the way, I soldered the wires onto the push, push button switch and I also put shrink wrap on it so if I turn on the key right and you push the button round and round we go a wonderful thing so we already wired up half of it and it wasn't at all difficult there's one additional thing I personally like to do just to make sure, like right now, if I leave it on, it's just going to stay on. You got hot things, and when you're wiring so something up for the first time, you don't want any surprises. So you would like some kind of indicator. And to that end, right, this is um, when the key switch is on, this is where the power is going to um, power up the entire bike, right? You could see it powers up this little switch which does the coil there so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hook this light up to that because I want to uh, I want to be able to keep track of when I left the power on or not so this side of the wiring diagram is all done but you could see I took the CDI and plugged the wire harness into it and by the way, I cut off the wire that you're not going to use, so I cut it off there, pulled it out of the harness just to get it out of the way. But now, what you're looking at is the remainder of the harness. So this red wire has to go right there on the key switch, right? Red. This blue wire has to go to the pulse generator and I'll show you how to identify that. The pulse generator on this machine does not use body ground, it uses its own ground. So we have this green wire, has to go to the pulse generator also. And you'll see green, green, green goes to green, blue goes to blue and I'll show that to you. Right, ground wires have to go to ground. And this one has to plug onto the ignition coil. So let's bring this right on over and start looking at how we're gonna do it. As you're laying out this junk, um, you really wanna make it as neat as possible. And the problem is I'm wiring it now and when I put the fender on, I might have to take some of it apart again, put the fender on, and then run the wires. So make sure you leave yourself plenty of length to do that. Right? You don't want to be pulling on things. Right now we want to wire it up and get it started. And then after we do that, we could, um, we could go forward and make it all neat and pretty. When you're looking at the all-terrain vehicle, you want to get to the stator side of the motor. And you can normally figure that out because there's wire sticking out of it. And when you look at the wire sticking out of it, a lot of times where they go is a little bit obvious. Like these three yellow ones eventually join the wire harness and go to the voltage regulator and then they come out of the voltage regulator and go to the battery so we already figured those out these guys here right one of those is green one of those is blue 
And if you take a look, I look at eBay, at used staters. A lot of times I could figure out which wires go to the pulse generator that way. I look at um, wiring um, diagrams on, um, you know, I just Google them up and look at it that way. Or sometimes I have a motor floating around with the cover off the side so I can trace them out that way. But last and not least is a lot of times the blue wire, when it comes out from behind the stator cover, it goes to the pulse generator and the green wire should go to ground or already go to ground. So you got that figured out. That leaves this one red wire. And there's a cutoff wire here. I believe they're open circuit, but I believe they go to the AC stator that appears to be opened on this machine. It appears to be failed. So anyway, I just extended the blue and green wires up to here. And you guys can see we're getting very close to hooking everything up. So you can see everything's hooked up, blue to blue, green to green, red to red, yellow wire on the coil, everything's grounded, right, and choke is set, and I checked the oil already, I put some gas in it, so let's turn it on. Now because of that flashing light, I know there's 12 volts going to the CDI. And if I just push this button, give it a little gas, hopefully she fires right up. Back to the little bit of gas. And there we have it. So what I showed you how to do was wire it up so this thing would run on a um, um, 12 volt DC CDI. You can see starts right up, runs pretty good, does everything it's supposed to. I showed you how to get around the hacked wire harness by using a little push button to make the starting solenoid work. So that gets us pretty far around this. What you do not have, and this is important, what you do not have is these switches are not working. So if you got to turn it off in an emergency situation, you got to turn the key off. So that's one thing to take note of, and that's not a trivial thing if you're not a person who doesn't panic, somebody who doesn't have some experience riding. That's first of all. Um, having this thing swing around, not good. One could easily see fashioning a little dashboard situation here, and perhaps putting this push button on there for starting the motor, and maybe even a little click switch for turning the headlight on and off and the other lights on and off rather than having them come on when you turn it on right it'd be nice if that was one could also do some a little bit of um, looking at the wiring on the engine internal to the engine there are two switches internal to the engine one when you put it in reverse it grounds out to it, it, it causes the wire to go to ground and when that happens if you got the high side of one of these lights right if you got one side of that going to 12 volts uh, then when you hit the switch in the motor it goes to ground the light will light up and that's exactly what happens when you go into neutral it grounds the neutral switch and when it goes into reverse it grounds the reverse switch and when it's not in reverse and it's not neutral 
bolt switches are floating and the lights are off. It's handy, particularly to have a um, neutral switch, right? You can tell when the key is on, right, because the light will go green. You'll also know that it's safe to turn the engine over. Right now, as soon as you turn the key on, the engine will turn over, right? Right now the key is off, no spin, key on, engine turn over. So there you go. I hope you guys found this video uh, interesting. I know you've looked at this bike a couple of times before, and what I'd like to do is show it to you one more time where I actually put all this stuff together. I get the nose cone on and I gotta buy a nose cone. Um, I gotta get a cover for that side of the engine, get that on it, get the wiring all cleaned up, get the gas tank hooked up. Um, right now I know the gas tank valve leaks by. I got a cap on it, otherwise it very slowly drips on the ground. Very annoying, uh, environmentally not so friendly. So I got to um, I got to get that um, fixed, so to speak. Um, so it needs a new valve. Um, these gas tanks are nice for troubleshooting, but you really can't ride much. Anyway, I would really like to show you this machine again. When that's done, I got to catch up with my buddy Steve, and uh, maybe Roscoe Diner will do a parking light video parking lot video on how to do that. One last look at this. Right, hopefully you can see it all. Read it. If you can't, let me know. Um, this, right, and this is when you're looking at the CDI like this, right? Those are where the wires go. So you can see the green at ground, the red at 12 volts DC coil, yellow, and the um, trigger is a blue wire. So you guys could see those. It's easier to do the harness than to cut these back and solder them on, right? It's just neater, cleaner, better looking. Anyway, once again, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I need you all to keep your feet down, your heads up. And I need you to get out and enjoy each and every day. Bye now.